I think it's really funny when I have multiple guests on the show and the content is very similar, despite the fact that they don't know each other and they're such different guests. This whole idea, this whole theme of women stepping into their power by truly honoring who they are, truly honoring their gifts, their innate, unique gifts, and being completely unapologetic about it. Kelly and I sat down. For those of you who've not heard of Kelly Brogan, she is just a force. She's absolutely beautiful. She's a doctor. She's a holistic psychiatrist. And she really shares her story in this conversation of reclaiming her feminine power and intuition. And I've seen in my own life over the last decade, what happens, how I transform when I really claim the gifts that I have, when I really claim the power that I have in my body. And it's it's not this sort of manufactured power that comes from the mind. It's this true knowing in the body. And for us to tap into that, to use it, to express it, it requires us to become deeply embodied. And so this is what this episode is all about. I know you are going to absolutely love this one. And especially for those of you who desire to cultivate more confidence in your life, I know this is going to be a beautiful one for you. I am incredibly excited, like bubbling with joy that the Life Mastermind, my high-end mastermind, is open for enrollment. This is my high-level container for women who desire to scale to six and seven figures and beyond and do it in the life way, lucrative, impactful, fun, and easy. This is a container where you will calibrate to the frequency of wealth, connection, and community by being a part of this container. It is part somatic healing, releasing the blocks, letting go of all of the parts of us that are keeping us stuck, as well as scaling with soul mentorship, how you can build that business of your dreams, the mission that's on your heart, the dream that you have, not from a place of force and hustle, but from a place of true energetic alignment and true ease. If that calls to you, you can head on over to pausebreathwork.com slash mastermind, fill out the application, and we'll see if it's a fit for you. All right, let's dive right into today's episode. You are listening to The Sam Skelly Show, your top spot for personal and spiritual development. This show is all about busting through illusions that keep us stuck, questioning the narrative on human existence, and constantly choosing to live life by design and not default. I have worked with tens of thousands of people across the globe and will be sharing the most effective and profound tools for happiness and fulfillment. I'm stoked you're here. My promise to you is this show will support you in becoming the most embodied, aligned, and fulfilled version of you. All right, let's go. Kelly, welcome to the show. I'm so excited to get to know you. It's a pleasure to be here. What is the number one thing right now that's making you feel most alive? Alchemy. <laughs> I am feeling really, really turned on by what it is to not just like stop with the bad patterns, not just illuminate them, you know, but to really turn the shame into play, to really turn the stuckness into movement and to find out, you know, that there are all of these little treasures in all of the, the pain points. And I um, have had a number of experiences along those lines in the past, well, I don't know, I would say year. However, it just keeps getting more, more exciting every time I end up feeling um, crumpled and contracted and scared. And I find a way to create from that place. This is so good. It's like pain is the portal to the liberation. Pain is the portal to innovation, creativity, like pathways for us to experience new energies, bring new things into our life. And before we started uh, recording, you were sharing that you were doing that right now through comedy, which I love, love, love. Can you share a little bit about that? <laughs> um, so as I mentioned, you know, I have a, a lifelong experience of offending people just being myself actually even like hurting people, just being my, like just waking up in the morning. And hey, wait, let's double click into that quickly. <laughs> what do you think that is? 
Like there's something in your beingness where like maybe it's like this light and then the darkness, it like brings darkness to be alchemized. Like, what do you think? I, I was raised by some pretty strong characters and to survive in my family, you had to have a very bold, strong, self asserted presence. Mm -hmm. I actually thought for most of my life that I was very confident person. And it turns out I have the same insecurities as everybody else. They were just more deeply buried. And so this, mm -hmm. this sort of persona of the say whatever she wants, like do do the damn thing, you know, big mouth, vibrant uh, personality that I've, I've cultivated has been well reinforced. Like, you know, I make friends easily, people, you know, sort of respond to me, they see me, right? So I don't have to suffer the experience of invisibility. However, I often um, have gotten the reflection that I'm like a bull in a china shop, right? Like I'm unfiltered. I say the thing in the crude way, the crass way, you know, I, I don't uh, attune well always to people's sensitivities. And so I've lived a lot of my life feeling sensitive to people's sensitivities, right? Like in a relationship, I will, like get very um triggered and frustrated when i feel i have to walk on eggshells mm. but the truth is that i don't even have yet a relationship to my own needs that is sufficient to even know where they fit in the rubric so i'm just wanting other people to not have needs right like often yeah that, yeah right yeah. so it's, it's stop being so sensitive which of course is itself a sensitivity so yeah i i have spoken out about many topics and upset many people about that um as i've done it and it never really i never really cared you know like i'm i made this like you know 12 person list you know of of uh informational terrorists in the past couple of years and it really was like kind of funny to me it didn't bother me at all but more recently as i have been integrating my sexuality, my sensuality, and my experience of play into my public persona, the the feedback, um, if you will, in quotes, mm -hmm. uh, in the public sector has um, been a bit, pretty split. And like half of it is, you know, you're, you're satanic, you are harming people, stop this, go back to writing books, you know, stay in your lane, doctor, you're undermining um, mm -hmm. what it is that you're here to do. So I'm literally being told, how to be, you know, what it should look like to be that and what it is that I'm here to do to serve others, right? And and this feedback started, I would say, um, right after I got married most recently in 2019, I, uh, I got an email from a colleague in the uh, activism space who said that she wanted to adjust my crown. And that was the sub subject line. It's kind of a good subject line. And she I'm said- I'm like, I'll open that. <laughs> <laughs> right, you, got, exactly. you converted me. You converted right, me. Right, exactly. And she said that I am undermining the movement. Um, at the time, I had posted an African dance video fully clothed with my girlfriends, you know, a dance clip from a, a routine that we did choreography at um, my wedding at that time. That's it. Imagine she was watching me now in a bikini, you know, twirling around a pole. So you should send was, it to her. Send her one. That of was there. <laughs> should. I should have created a involuntary subscription list. So I, I have been on this for a couple of years where I'm recognizing, well, this is what gives me pleasure. This is what I want to do. This is the part of who I am that I myself have shamed into submission. And now she wants out and it's very tender, right? It's very tender because mm. she's just peeking out, yeah. um, you know, from behind the wall. And so that sensitivity means that anytime somebody says something that hurts, it's because a part of me also believes that to be true. So mm -hmm. how can I work with that hurt? And you know, what I made today was just a little video reel of like what it feels like to, to try to please all the people, right? It's like, I call it a clipboard. Like, it's like, I have this, this clipboard and I'm like taking notes of, she wants it like yes. this. She says I should be like this. And, and, yes. and a woman doesn't do this and a doctor doesn't do that. And a mom definitely doesn't do that. And, and like, you had this long page of notes about how to be. And, you know, mm -hmm. I just finished reading Madeline Moon's book, Artist of Love. And she has this amazing quote about- I love her. Oh my God. Her book is amazing. And her she has a quote in there that I will, you know, forever utter. And it's, it's about how, you know, you go into a box to die, right? Like that's what a box is for. It's mm -hmm. to die in, right? Like to be dead in. Mm -hmm. And these boxes are otherwise- you know, the experience of breaking out of them is maybe what we came here to do, right? Like that contrast of like, oh, I was like this. I did believe this. I thought this was my story. And what if I try this on? 
Mm. And that's a tentative transition, you know, that if we can laugh at ourselves and play with it a little bit, it's, yeah. it's so much more delightful. Yeah. Yeah. Maddie's great. Her and I, so funny, so crazy. Her and I have literally been friends for eight years. We talk mm, maybe every second day, but Hello. we've literally never met in person. Yes. It is the, it is the craziest relationship of my life to this date. <laughs> It's time. It's time for a girl date. I know. We like just keep for the last eight years just circling each other, but it's it's hilarious. What I love about like some of the things that she says in her book is around how like we can put on different characters, right? And so you are exploring these characters of like what is the vibration of this like comedic feel like? What is the vibration of this like seductive like goddess on this pole feel like? What is this care like and we have like so many different characters and in all of those different characters, we get to explore new versions of ourselves and it is interesting right because it's like you but like to you like in your words like you just trigger people by breathing by just showing up but also there's a whole range of people who are not as loud as the triggered ones of course but who you are actually a giant permission slip for them here's a mom a doctor everything but she's also in this exploration of self which is i'm sure for you incredibly healing to find those new versions of you well, it's, it's the same thing I saw with my patients, right? Over and over and over again for a decade, I saw, oh, wow, the thing that you were told is wrong with you. The way in which you conceived of yourself and colluded with, you know, this guild of psychiatry to assert that you are damaged, mm-hmm. that is actually where your gift lies. Mm. It, it's literally in the place that the shame pointed to. Your gift is in there. You gotta go in in the cave and get it. So it's the same thing, like I have always experienced my, you know, I I can identify as an intellectual, right? As a a dancer, as a mother, you know, as I, at any given time, I could be like studying lawful emancipation, like scooping chicken poop off of my patio, you know, like making dinner for my kids and like going to a twerk class. Like I, I, I found that to be an embarrassing aspect of myself. Like nobody get will ever get me because you're not supposed to be this, all these things like that don't make sense together, right? Like pick a lane, Kelly. Like that's the phrase like I've been abusing myself with all these years. And in fact, as as you were saying, when we started, you know, now I'm seeing, wow, we all love range, right? And I, one day going to be an incredible partner, you know, to a man mm. who wants all the flavors, right? And I have developed intimacy, of course, now in this later phase with this more, you know, I guess the the naughty provocateur, you know, from the seductress flavor, like that has been um, something I have only used manipulatively, I would say, and then the shadow expression of it, because it's in there. And now that it's more out <laughs> exposed to the oxygen, you know, I can choose, as you're saying, like I can choose which energy to try on. And this is the feminine. It's like mm. what's so extraordinary about women is that we have these different flavors, these different archetypes, and we can draw on these energies, um, mm. like a huge Rolodex of resources. Yeah. yeah, it is it is so wild. I was talking with my fiance a couple months ago about how there's like this girl boss hustle culture ickness that's happening right now. I actually wrote a post about it yesterday of like, we are not men. We are so different. Like we're not the same. We're literally so unbelievably different. Like we need to recognize that in our culture. Cause there's a whole other movement that it's like, no women can be like, like, no, like you can't like try, but you're going to burn yourself out. You're going to fuck your adrenals. You're going to, you're going to hate it. And there's this, we're like templating, like, okay, what does it take for a man to be successful? Let's template that. And we're, we're not actually living our soul's mission. We're not actually giving the missions on our heart, the, the, the breath, the space, the juice, the nourishment that they need in order to actually thrive. Like we're not builders, we're creators. And that is a interesting thing in our world today because we do live in such a masculine, hyper speed, hyper achieving world where like, that's what we get achievement for. Like, I remember the first two companies that I built, I, I did it as if I literally had a dick. Like I was, I, I like, I, I, you know, I like hired all these male mentors and I was v- very masculine in it. And I would work 16 hour days and 18 hour days. And I would follow, you know, all of these people saying like, you got to work for it. You got to work hard for it. 
And I truly believe in every fiber of my being like, oh, that must be true if, in order for me to be successful and take this mission that is a very feminine heart-centered mission and put it into the world. I got to do it with force. And so even just the the energetics of that was out of integrity. Like I wanted to bring people back into their bodies and heal their relationship with food, my second company, Hungry for Happiness. But I was building it in a way that was the complete opposite energetically. And there is this space that needs to open up this very, this new paradigm, this new way of women in business who are permissioning all of these different uh, flavors of, of her and realizing that rest is actually just as productive as the go. And when we can do it from alignment and do it from all of us, it just opens up so much more possibility for creation, collaboration, innovation. Absolutely. I mean, I think about that. I've been exploring my relationship to money uh, in the past, I would say year or so as like a, you know, single woman, single mom kind of mm -hmm. earner situation. And, you know, I could, I could make money and my motivation could be providing, you know, for my animals and my kids and keeping a roof over my head or whatever, or my motivation could be travel and like beautiful clothing and experiences right and play and the money that i would want and need to experience those things that feminine drive is a very different energy right so it's even it could look the same right um on on some dimension but the intentions the motivation and the experience of it are totally different and you know i've explored um as a as a controversy addict i would say um i have in recovery i have explored this transition that i wonder you know if we're making uh collectively which is some of us anyway uh which is from the field of controversy and warfare into complementarity right which which means that these, these differences that would otherwise have created an atmosphere of suffering, adversity, and, you know, power over, mm. differences organize themselves into domains and they actually serve each other. Mm. And that in the, you know, men, women relating um, field is called polarity, right? I mean, yeah. at least in, in, in certain rubrics and I have followed uh, David Data and Maddie and, and others who, who espouse this, this this version of get in your lane right this version of so, sort of how do i organize myself in a way that serves my needs and also interestingly serves the needs of another simultaneously even though we are so different mm -hmm. and that's where you know i can recruit certain energies and archetypes um that don't you know i always thought like my kali energy um as data would say like my slay anything less than love energy yeah, yeah. Um, was masculine. Mm -hmm. I thought that was like my masculinity and I was reflected that, you know, in, in relationships. You're so masculine. You're never going to have the experience that you want. You're not woman enough. I'm not soft enough. I'm not feminine enough, whatever. And the reclamation of that flavor of my womanhood has helped me to see, okay, if I have this accordion of feminine flavors, the attunement to the masculine polarity is going to help me to see which one Mm. It's a match, right? And which one actually serves, you know, the person in front of me, let's say. And so I've become really interested in polarity as the solution, you know, to the yes. hell we have created of fighting, 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 fighting. And of course, my my background is in like what happens when you fight your body, your symptoms, you know, what happens when you you orient towards your experience with resistance as the primary thrust of your vital force is to say no, you know, no to my insomnia, no to my bloating, like yeah. instead of like, how can I, you know, interact with this in a way that that serves me and what I actually say that I, I want. Mm, that is so powerful. Yeah. It's like the, what, what creates, I believe, a lot of sickness in our world is the overriding of the body whispering because the body whispers mostly, right? Until it gets like the range of the, the physical ailments that don't whisper, they scream. But it's like, how can we moment by moment be highly attuned to what we truly need in, and, and like respond? It's like the reach and respond, like a kid, right? It, resp it like reaches like do you love me? Am I here? And then yeah. we respond and then it creates like, it creates safety. It creates healing. It creates well being. And right now there's like this override of the body's natural wisdom, that yeah. this innate wisdom that, that gosh, when we settle into it and we listen to it can truly set us free. I think, um, 
for me as a former secularist and atheist and allopathic physician, the idea of like innate wisdom, the idea of honestly, even intuition was really anathema, you know, to, to my perspective on life. Like, what does that even mean? It was like a Hallmark Cardi, you know, like, what does that really mean? What are we really talking about here? And certainly that can't be in the, in the realm of relevance that objective decision-making and causality and, you know, proper response to um, challenges would be. And I, I have a bias, you know, around the reclamation of intuition. And I, I don't know how possible it is to have a relationship with yourself and your inner compass and your sacred impulses until and if you have done some of these like preliminary self-acquainting um, steps, taking these steps, mm-hmm. right? And the first one, I think, you know, I sort of like put them in these categories, like I call it like get real, get well, get free, right? And the get real part is like, it's like deprogramming, like defragging all of the the beliefs around, like, let's just talk first about like the body and health and what does that mean? And, and I think the absence of that step, right, is why we have so many spiritual gurus espousing, you know, the virtue of participation, let's say, in so many of the mandates that have come across the, the stage in the past couple of years, mm-hmm. because they didn't have the opportunity maybe to do the the deprogramming around, you know, what what is it that a pharmaceutical actually does and means and, you know, what from the physiological to the subliminal, you know, like what mm-hmm. what's going on here and mm-hmm. and what is the truth about, you know, contagion and infection and and what about cancer? Is it really a mistake that the body's mm-hmm. made, making that we need to cut out and fight and burn and all these things, right? So first the the mind, you know, you have to yeah. reclaim your mind. And then there are lifestyle factors in, you know, this, what I call the get well phase, you know, where, where if your body is super noisy with things that just suck to experience, right? Mm-hmm. Like painful joints and your hair is falling out and you have gas pain all the time and, you know, you, you can't sleep and your energy's all over the place. How are you going to identify your intuition? It's just so loud in there mm-hmm. that the, the sensation of that little yes, that whisper you you alluded to, that little yes, that little no, is going to be so delicate, mm-hmm. and you know, relative to these these louder um, so called symptoms that I don't know. You know, I certainly couldn't. I only knew how to use my brainwashing <laughs> to continue yeah. to survive, right? So I only knew how to think in pros and cons and try to mitigate, you know, potential risks and and mm-hmm. things that would feel bad to me. And I was still running from the badness. Right. So the the reclamation of intuition for me has not come until I have done those steps and really invested in nervous system healing to the extent that I can follow my intuition, even when big feeling of fear and potentially shame surface in my body. Right. Because if I have an intuition that I need to leave a relationship, let's say the fear of abandonment, betrayal, rejection, like all the things that get swirled into that ending, mm-hmm. um, the fear of being consumed by the loss and the grief, um, the fear of what it will feel like to be alone. Mm-hmm. All of that, those sensations literally in my body will be too big to hold. Literally, mm-hmm. I can't hold them for more than a couple seconds. And so I'll do anything still to not feel them. Mm-hmm. And it's a nervous system capacity mm-hmm. issue to grow your ability to sit with certain states so that they finally get decoupled from that existential level, like, you know, alarm um, Mm. that says like, you're literally going to die if you leave that man (laughs) or whatever. We tell ourselves um, recruiting these, this past information that has certainly served us. Um, But I couldn't follow, for example, that intuition until, and if I'm at a place where I can recognize the opportunity and I can seize it because I am okay enough to move through the fire. Right. Um, And I feel myself as bad and wrong in the eyes of another, Mm -hmm. which I, you know, I call wearing your villain crown. It's the hardest work I've ever done in my life is to try on experiences where somebody I, I really care about and whose opinion, you know, whether it's 
you know, partner or my daughters or, you know, my teammates or whatever to recognize that I can survive their thinking that I'm bad and wrong. Mm, I will so be alive on the other end. Right? And yeah, I only know that because yeah. I've, I've experienced it. And a lot yeah. of spirituality, I think, can can get in the way because we so want to, to find ways to be right that we hide in these, you know, spiritual expressions of like empathy and compassion and doing the right kind of thing. But we are still like slipping in like the, and I'm right. right? And don't <laughs> it leaks see? out. I mean, it leaks mm-hmm. out, right? So just like, what if you just try it on, mm-hmm. right? Just mm-hmm. try it on and, and let somebody be, be right about how wrong you are. So this is great. I've got two questions. Number one, in that experience of the big emotions coming through, and I love how you said the reclamation of intuition. That's awesome. So good. How do you and your body discern the difference between what is intuition, like that visceral no, and then what is fear? Yeah, that's a great question. And I, the way that I have found to answer it is that my intuition has no charge, no charge. I feel charge in my body. I have like a somatic ex- sequence that's like, first I feel racing hard, then I feel sweating under my arms, then I have like heat up my neck, mm-hmm. right? And that could be if I like see somebody I think might be the the love of my life, you know, or if I get an email telling me I just lost my medical license or whatever, like it, it's yeah. the same sequence, right? So of stimulation and that's a lot of Carolyn Elliott's work um, with existential kink is to really demonstrate how these sensations, whether we we frame it as like the thing we hate or we frame it as the thing we love. There, there's a lot of overlap, you know, yes. like excitement and anxiety. Yes. Describe it as like a teeny, teeny, teeny no. Like, let's say my intuitive hit is mm, not for me. Don't go to that family gathering. It's not for you. So I might get a little no, but then I'll have like what I call like a big pile of yes on top, right? <laughs> and the charge is in the oh, it's fine. What is it going to cost you? Like, you know, your, your aunt Joan is always like so hurt when you don't show up and it's, it's just like two hours. Like, don't be a diva. Just go, just go. It's fine. Okay. I'm going Mm -hmm. right. So that pile of yes had a lot of like, uh, in it. And sometimes it's the opposite where it's like just a little, a little teeny. Yes. Like, yeah, post that dance video. (laughs) Right. And then there's like a big pile of no on top. That's like, Oh, I remember, you know, what they said last time and they're probably still lurking around and they're going to, they're going to say it again this time. And, and God, you've already like fucked up your entire career, your credentials, your business, your legitimacy already. You're going to keep doing it. Like, when do you stop? Just stop. Right. So the, the no has a lot of energy. Um, so the, the intuitive little yes, little no is so, it's like a little tap. It's like, um, yep. Yep. Nope. Yep. Nope. It's not like a yes, fuck yes. Mm. And it's not like a hell no either. It's neither of those. Mm -hmm. And so feeling that, feeling for that, it requires like in many ways, I don't know, maybe not for everyone, for me, like, like a calm, comfortable body. Right. And it requires Mm. slowness and spaciousness Mm -hmm. so that you can perceive like these, these sometimes sequential surfacing sensations and that <laughs> requires you know that that there is a dedication to self yeah right that you've already chosen yourself you've chosen life right you're you're no totally. longer on the path of slowly dying mm. and then it just it comes and building that you know i don't know how i would be where i am in my process without my women, <laughs> right? Like building sure. that I think also requires community and, uh, and not a lot. Like if you have one, one person, right. In your life who can hold you strong, like give you that, that gaze that says like, no, 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 you've got this. You can, mm-hmm. You're so great. Right. Mm-hmm. Like a, like a midwife or a great doula, right? Like my mm-hmm. girlfriends are that for me. And when I feel mm-hmm. wobbly, you know, or like, what the fuck am I doing? Mm-hmm. I get that gaze and I'm like, okay, you're with me. You're with me. Okay. I'm going to keep going. Okay. Here I go. <laughs> right. And so here I go. Here right. I go. Like that's what following your intuition feels like, at least mm. for me in the beginning, you know, maybe I love that. More, more grand later on. I'm not sure. Yeah. I love how you explain that with like the lack of charge. I, as you said that I'm like, that's it. 
That's it. I've never heard it been described like that, but that's exactly what it is. It's like there's no fuzziness. There's no like energy. It's just like it just is. It's just there's an isness to it. This is what it is. So I'm curious for you to share. Obviously, over the last couple of years, you've been very vocal on things like COVID and the rest of it. And th- that's when I fell in love with you, by the way. Um, I was like, yeah, Kelly, let's get it. Um, it was just really refreshing. And you got shit on, I'm sure, like tons and tons. And so for most people, for, for a lot of women, especially like the fear of not being liked is deathly terrifying. There's like terror that comes up in the system when when. And, and a lot of times it's like when women don't like other women, right? When women oh, don't like yeah. other women, it's oh, like yeah. this feeling of like, I'm going to be ostracized. I'm going to die. I'm going to be whatever it is. And there's something in you that doesn't care as much as most people. And so I'm curious what that is in you, what your beliefs are around that to help liberate some of it because whether like whether people are vocal or not like everyone's judging everyone you know it's like (laughs) so i'm curious your mindset around that your view on that to to support people in like giving less fucks and letting their truth come through Hmm. so it's interesting because yes i have attracted a lot of controversy since for my entire public career over the past like decade. And it really hasn't mattered whether I'm talking about antidepressants or vaccines or, you know, pharma in general, or whether I'm mm-hmm. talking about chronic illness, uh, birth control pill, that's a big one. Mm-hmm. Um, whatever it has been, I have, I have had the reflection of my own internal insecurities with, uh, through the, through the voices of others who tell me I'm dangerous, I'm behaving recklessly, I'm betraying the guild, whatever that is at at a given time. Right. Um, and it never bothered me. It, It never bothered me. And the reason is because I built up this persona where I am intelligent and I am credentialed and I know the science and I literally walk around with like, you know, I have a, a, the capacity to to memorize like a lot of science and details and statistics or whatever. And I would have it like in a holster. Right. And so I would walk around with this attitude of like, I fucking dare you. I dare dare you. I will slay you to bits. Like I will slay Mm. you to bits, like step to me. And I would prepare, right? Like I would study and I would know all of the data to substantiate scientifically my perspective. So in Mm. ways that's funny, it's cool, whatever, it's great. However, it's a very different thing to know and trust and align with yourself without any evidence that you're right. Mm -hmm. So that's the place that I'm in in these days in my life is the criticism and pushback that I am experiencing in my career now uh, if you want to call it a career, whatever I'm doing in my being me um, now, <laughs> whatever I'm, whatever, whatever I'm doing on this rock. In this yes, sky. exactly. Whatever I'm up to um, is not anything that I can defend myself about, right? And yeah. there's no there's no papers in my holster. Mm-hmm. There's no um, evidence I can bring forth to to say I'm right and you're wrong. And here's why. Mm-hmm. So I have this opportunity to stand with myself to know that the choices that I'm making are right for me, or I wouldn't be making them. Um, Because I don't believe in mistakes and I don't believe that we ever make wrong choices. You know, we always have a very good reason for doing exactly what we're doing. So to stand in that, it's an exercise in really healing the self-abandonment and betrayal that comes with proving why you're right, Mm -hmm. which Mm -hmm. is all of activism. Right. All of activism is here's what needs to change. I know it needs to change. I'm right that it needs to change. And here's why, like, open the scroll, you know, of of science, quote unquote, to substantiate the perspective. Right. So how could I possibly be be right about, you know, sharing like scantily clad dance videos when people tell me I'm a bad dancer and I'm a, you know, a shameful woman and how I, they feel compassion for my daughters that they were born from me. Right. And I am undermining the the field of holistic health by just, you know, um, having an Instagram account, for example, I can't be right. What am I going to prove? Right. Like, so the only thing I can do is stay with myself 
stay mm-hmm. with myself. And what that looks like is feeling whatever feels might come up. You know, when I get that kind of feedback from an anonymous, no one who, who would never say that to my face if they were in front of me. Okay. And so never, all- and never has a photo on their Instagram account. Right. Just- <laughs> but it's to be, it's a beautiful spiritual exercise and a practice. It's a real boot camp if you work with it. Right. Mm. So I get that feedback and I sit with the sensations and I literally just stop, drop and feel. And I sit I with the that. sensations and maybe I feel like that flush, right. I mentioned, or heat rising or like uncomfortable tingling or racing heart or whatever. And I just breathe and feel, mm-hmm. you know, and I have an extraordinary coach, Whitney, who helps me with this every single week. So this is not as easy as it sounds. Mm-hmm. However, that is the resolution of the self-abandonment, the self-rejection and the self-betrayal that otherwise would be reflected to me in the outer world. Right. So if I stay with myself, ultimately these things will stop mattering yeah. and because they'll stop mattering because I won't have that sensation any longer mm-hmm. one day somehow. And I've seen it happen in different topics, right. Where something that used to like destabilize me, like, mm-hmm. you know, to put me on the ground. Now it's like, I feel okay in my body, mm-hmm. even though the stimulus is really similar. How did that happen? Well, I stayed with myself long enough that I trained and rewired my nervous system to understand that was then. Mm-hmm. Now it's cool. Look around. Everything's fine. Yes. This is a, a digital pixel like stranger that is, it does everything is fine. And honestly, even if it was my lover telling me these things, like it's all good. <laughs> it's fine. Yeah. It's all grist mm-hmm. for the mill. And so mm-hmm. I can't say that I've like arrived at the place of like giving zero fucks. What I have What I have come to understand though, is something that you alluded to, which is this sister woundology that I certainly, you know, have engaged in, in my own way. It's not like I've ever trolled anyone's account. Um, Mm -hmm. However, in the judgment of other women, especially sexually expressive women, if we want to like, you know, say it like that, I have imagined, you know, or or let's take another example. Let's say the, the mother who's vaccinating her child right? I have certainly imagined myself to know better what that woman should be doing with her life Mm -hmm. and how she should be conducting herself. Mm -hmm. And I have known better to the extent that I imagine that it's my role to tell her how to, how to be herself and how to do her. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So whenever we, as women imagine that we're in a position to tell another woman how to be, Mm -hmm. to give another woman unsolicited critical feedback, and constructive information, even when they have not asked. Mm. That is an act of abuse, aggression, Mm -hmm. and the kind of dominance and oppression that we have been fighting for Mm. Lord knows how long, Mm. right? And we are doing it now to each other, Mm -hmm. to each other. The tribe of hater, you know, energy that comes my way is not meant. It is like one man to 200 women. Yeah. I am not sitting here worried that men are objectifying me and, and judging me and no, that it's not even mm-hmm. honestly relevant at this point. What I am interested in is how we as mothers with daughters and we as women in uh, the experience of relating to other women, imagine that we know better how a woman should be. Mm-hmm. And we are the ones perpetuating all of those small boxes that we then claim we want to break out of in our different ways, right? Because nobody wants to be in a cage. Nobody wants to be a slave. Nobody wants to be in a box. So who Mm -hmm. is building these boxes, right? It's women. It's women. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I I follow a teacher named Om Rupani. He has very controversial perspectives. You think I have a big mouth? He's got a bigger one. And he talks all the time about how women have created the world that they say they don't want to live in. And we've done this chiefly by cutting down each other and cutting down men, right? Mm -hmm. Like we want to be around and with these confident, self-assured men. And all we do is shit talk men all the time, Mm -hmm. compare them, demean them, talk about toxic masculinity, right? And then we want to live in a world where that strong alpha dom, right? Like waltzes in and sweeps up us up off our feet and takes care of us and provides and all things right so we have this opportunity to really 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 internally orient and get to this place where we focus pretty much exclusively on getting right with ourselves that's it or we imagine that we have anything to say to anybody else and this includes parenting you know i made a commitment 
many years ago because of my mother line of trauma and abuse to never tell my daughters, never give them negative feedback, especially around their appearance that mm -hmm. they have not asked me for. Yeah. Literally, we have an agreement that unless they have like broccoli hanging out of their tooth, <laughs> like, you know, if my daughter walks out of the house with like, you know, booty shorts or like the bottom of her boobs hanging out, whatever, like, mm -hmm. however, not that she does that, but however, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. however she expresses is up to her mm -hmm. and connecting with her in her compass, trying on different things and experiences, you know, is for me to help support her in exploring. Mm -hmm. And it's been beautiful. I mean, I have tween and teenager now and I can see, wow, I have given them a different experience that I than I had. And they are their own barometers of what mm -hmm. feels good on and around their bodies. Um, and really ending these cycles, it looks like that. It looks like not imagining that you know better how someone else. I love is. this. I love this. Yeah. It's like the antidote and the remedy to all of this is coming home to the self mm. and acknowledging and permissioning, permissioning all of these layers and all of these variations and getting so curious, curiosity of, of the self curiosity about, Oh, I wonder what that is like. Yeah. Cause it, you're right. It's like the assumption that we know is putting us into states of disconnection and all this garbage. And I, I do, I do believe it's changing and I, you know, more and more as we're evolving, you know, I think we're in the messiness in a lot of ways in the world of like breaking out of like all of the, ugh. and it, you know, any, anything that need, needs to be liberated is first like really intense, right? It's really, really intense. It's liberated and then it evolves into something more. And I think this conversation that we're having now is on that path, but it's going to take a little work. For sure. But yeah. not as long as we think, right? Like mm -hmm. the, there, there's such an acceleration. And I don't even say that in like the trite, you know, spiritual <laughs> way, like that astrology is always reflecting to us. Like yeah. it's, it's probably, I would say like within a year, you know, my girlfriend said to me the other day, she's like, when I was sort of like, you know, wobbling and she's like, just imagine 10 years from now, mm -hmm. like we're going to look back on what felt taboo and we're going to laugh for sure. That ever we're in that too small box, you mm -hmm. know, I mean, I even looked through my public progression and I remember the courage that it took me the first time, you know, like I posted my legs, <laughs> right. Like short, me in shorts, right. Versus like, mm -hmm. you know, whatever more rigid uptight version of me clothed I had mm -hmm. formerly presented. Right. And I, it, it was scary as hell. And now I've had a progression of you know, really rendering normative yeah. for myself. It's my choice. I get to live in whatever world I want to, mm -hmm. uh, through the power of my attention and my inner belief structure. So, you know, when she said that, I was like, wow, that's so true. And mm -hmm. I think it's probably not going to be 10 years. I think it's going to be like, I agree with you. One or two, right? I like, agree with you. Back. Yeah. Things are happening at warp speed right now, you know? Sure. And as long as we can like let the energetics play out and just let things be released without us attaching to them and like trying to grip on, that will happen even quicker, even quicker. Kelly, this has been so great. I'm so happy we did this. You are epic. <laughs> it's been really fun. I love this conversation. Where can our community find you, connect with you, get amongst your work? Oh, wow. Well, there is only one reliable place at the moment as my Telegram channel is being <laughs> steadily algorithmically drained. Uh, that renders every single platform for me um, something of a sen censorship playground. So um, yeah, Kelly Rogan MD is, is really the only place I can, I can point people to with any degree of security. Okay, beautiful. <laughs> there we go. And we'll put all of the links in the show notes below. Kelly, thank you so much for your time today. This conversation has been awesome. Thank you, thank you.